Today, I'm going to show you how I upgraded from this stock bed to this newer, fancier bed. So you may be wondering, why did I upgrade from the stock bed that came with the printer to this newer 3D printed bed? The re main reason was that the level sensor on my printer actually went bad after about three months after getting it. So instead of just going online and buying a new sensor to replace the one that existed, I decided that I would spend a bunch more time redesigning the base of the printer so that it could be a little bit more modular and I could know a little bit more about what was going on in the base, as well as it would be a little bit more fun than just going out and buying the part and placing it on the printer. Another issue I have with this printer is that the bed it came with is really rigid. You can't do a whole lot of modifications to it. Um, it's a nice bed, don't get me wrong. I just didn't have all of the, the features that I wanted. Mainly, it's pretty rigid. You can't extend the bed. The, print bed is held on with some magnets, which is handy to pop your prints on and off, but it leaves something to be desired, at least for me. So I decided that I was going to completely redesign it. Now there are a couple downsides to this newer bed that I'm using. First of all, you have to ditch the heated bed. There's no space for it. I didn't design a place for it to go, but for me, that's not a big issue. I print mainly with PLA uh, and I use glass with blue tape on it, and that works just fine for me. I don't have any problems. This new design also sets me up so that I can extend the print bed in the Y direction, meaning I can print longer stuff without having to do a whole lot of changes. There's... All of these parts are printed in PLA. They were just done on this printer. They all fit. Uh, the bed trays have to go at a bit of an angle, but everything else fits just fine on the bed. First up are the two bed end pieces. Up next we have four rod clamps, which will be used to clamp down the linear rods. Two belt clamps, again clamping down the uh, belts. Two of these tray spacers, which will space out the bed tray ends, which actually hold the glass bed that I'm using. Four little leveling knobs, and then all of the hardware. The hardware includes 20 M3 screws, 20 M3 nuts, eight M3 washers, two springs out of click pens, some timing belt, a belt tensioner, and some linear rods. The linear rods and the belt tensioner are the ones that already exist on the printer. There is one last piece you'll need, which is this Z-axis spacer. It just clips onto the Z-arm, and then it just makes sure that you hit the limit switch on the Z before your nozzle hits your print bed. Let's start with assembling the bed ends. So I'll just use one of the bed ends here. Drop the rod clamp on the end, drop the nut into the little slot that is opening, and then just thread the screw on. These don't have to be overly tight at this point um, because we'll actually, once we assemble it onto the linear rods that are there, we'll clamp them down and everything will get tightened up. So just finger tight and everything should be good for now. Once you do one end, just flip the piece around, do the other rod clamp, and then just repeat the same process for the other rod clamps and bed end piece. And with that, our bed end pieces are ready. I'll wait to assemble these bed belt clamps until we actually go to put them on the printer. Up next, we'll do the bed tray assembly. This is where the bed will actually be clamped in place. Use the bed tray spacer and, and thread the screw through the hole on the tray end. Just drop the nut into the slot and then thread the screw into place. These don't have to be super tight right now. We'll come back around after we've got all of them kind of in place and crank everything down with a screwdriver. And a little leeway now will make it easier to get the other side on when the time comes. Just repeat the same process of dropping the nut into place, threading the screw on for all of the four spots around the bed tray. And once all of them are in place, go ahead and tighten them all down with a screwdriver, just holding the nut in place with your fingers. And there we have it. The tray is ready to add the leveling hardware to. 
last step before we get over to the actual printer is to assemble the leveling hardware onto the bed tray. So this is just going to be threading one of those screws through the hole on the end of the bed tray, along with a washer, a spring, another washer, and then finally just threading one of those nuts on. This is where our leveling knobs will go, but they'll just kind of fall off as you move the piece around to put the other leveling hardware on. So I just leave them off for now and we'll get back to them. Repeat the same process on the other corners. The springs that I'm using here came from the inside of click pens. I found them to be the appropriate stiffness, but they were a bit too long, so I ended up cutting them in half and they were the right length then. So I only had to sacrifice two pens to get all of the springs that I needed. To cut the springs in half, I actually just took two pairs of pliers, placed them at about the midpoint, and then just bent the spring back and forth. Doing this to two springs left me with all of the shorter springs that I needed for this entire bed. And there we go, we're all set. Now for the fun part on the actual printer. So to start with, you have to disconnect the bed heater, um, which is done by just taking off the base plate and then disconnecting the zip ties that run up through the printer, just making sure that cable is loose. I've already done it here, so I'm gonna move on to moving the bed. The bed for the V3 is just held on with these screws in the front and back. So I just loosened them a little bit and we'll take them out slowly this bed has a tendency to rack because of the belt tension on the inside and it can actually cause it to try and jump out of your hand. So just be careful with this and, and take your time. As I remove this front screw here, you'll actually see the whole bed drop. This is a little bit of what I'm talking about, but as I remove this other screw here, you'll see the whole thing jump a little bit. And there we go. And this is just because of that belt again is pulling it in a weird position. Uh, this last screw is actually holding it a little bit more, and there it goes. It jumps one last time. Now with the bed free, we can reach under and actually unwind the belt from around the two uh, wheels that are guiding it. Here you can see those wheels as well as the linear rods. Well, again, you reuse those linear rods to actually assemble the, the parts back onto. Oh, I almost forgot. On the underside of the bed, uh, we'll actually need this little spring right here. To put these parts back on the printer, we'll start with the bed ends, and those will just be clamped onto the linear rods. We want to make sure that the belt cutouts that you can kind of see there past my thumb are on in the front, they're on the right hand side, and they're always a little bit higher than the center of the piece. Here I'm just tightening the screws going back and forth to make sure that piece kind of stays vertical in its final position and then just doing that with the other rod, and then this piece should be all set. There we go. Now here's the back piece, and you'll actually notice a mistake here. I have it on backwards. That little gap should be on the opposite side on the back. It should be, there we go, I flipped it around. And I'll show you what I mean here with going back and forth between the top and bottom screw. So just tighten down the top one a little bit, tighten down the bottom one a little bit. And you'll want to make sure, again, you keep that piece kind of vertical. That will ensure the clamping forces are evenly distributed throughout the piece. Next up is the belt and tensioner. Uh, I'm doing the back one first, so I'll kind of breeze through it here. And then I'll explain a little bit more when you can see on the front. But this is where those belt clamps will come back into play. Also make sure to note which way the teeth on the belt are facing. Here, the teeth on my belt are facing to the right. That way they actually engage with that uh, wheel that's on the stepper motor. Then just wind the belt around the wheels. It goes in front of the front one and then behind the back one and then through the gap in the front bed end. I'll give you a close up of how this belt is actually run in a minute here. Before we install the belt clamp on the front, we actually want to install the belt tensioner. It's just easier before the belt is already under tension and you're trying to apply more. I pull it tight here and then I just kind of locate where I want the tensioner to go. 
I wanted to go pretty close to the front of this whole assembly. That way there's enough space between that front bed end and the first wheel that the belt goes through. Next we'll install the belt clamp by just running the belt into that little gap, placing the belt clamp into place while also putting tension on the belt to make sure that that spring actually extends just a little bit. Once we get everything kind of in place, just drop the screw in, thread the nut on, and do the same for the bottom. And with these screws clamped down, that's the whole bed assembly all set. Here is a better close-up of how that belt is actually run. Finally, we can drop those leveling nuts into place just in the four holes on the two bed ends and then drop the bed tray on top. Drop the bed into place and then just clamp it down. I'm using binder clips here just to hold everything in place. And that's the whole upgrade. Just plug your printer back in, home it, and you're all set. With just a few hours of print time, as well as some small pieces of hardware, I was able to add manual leveling to this printer, which did not come with it standard, as well as get it set up so that I can extend the print area fairly easily by just reprinting those bed spacers and getting some longer linear rods. I have been using this bed for a few weeks now, and it's worked great for me. I've been able to get really good prints off of it, better than I was getting before, just because of an inability to manually level. So. I hope you find this useful as I wanted it and I couldn't find it out there, so I designed it myself. So I hope that this is useful to someone else as well. Thanks for watching.